now button for me. Thank you. And before we do any presentation at Royal Roads University, we always acknowledge that we live, learn, and work on the traditional lands of the Songhees and the Iswaimalt families. And learning has been happening here for countless generations. We are so grateful to be on this land. And I also want to acknowledge that we are in a complex time. With this health, global health crisis, it has really highlighted all sorts of inequity and issues and social issues. And I think that many of us are thinking about what the way forward is and hoping to co-create a reality that was much better than the one that we had before and thinking about what the future looks like. And I think that's why many of you are here today is thinking about what the future looks like and uh, wanting to explore the masters in intercultural and international communication. A warm welcome to Dr. Zenny Lee, School of Communications Director and MAIIC Program Head. He will be sharing information about the MA in Intercultural and International Communication Program and taking you through the majority of the presentation today. My name is Imara Angus, and I will be co-hosting this session alongside Andrea Ferro Lopez. In addition, we will also have program associate Tania Swan and enrollment advisors monitoring the chat today. So feel free to ask questions throughout. They will do their best to answer, and we will also have a time at the end for questions. And now I would like to invite Dr. Zenian uh, Leon to lead the rest of the presentation. Oh, pardon me, I'm so sorry. I got way ahead of myself, <laughs> didn't I? Before that, I'd love to um, first take you through the agenda and get to know one another. I'm going to quickly launch a poll because we would love to get a bit of a check of the room and see um, what you're interested in learning more about today so that we can tailor our presentation. So I'm going to launch a quick poll here. And I'll give you a few seconds to fill out this poll while I go through the rest of the agenda. So we'll leave this up here. And the poll is basically just wanting to know what intake of the MAIIC that you're interested in joining us for. Throughout the rest of the presentation, we'll also be discussing a brief overview of the Royal Roads University experience, program specific information, and questions at the end. All right, I'll give the poll a few more seconds. It looks like we have um, quite a few answers. Thank you. Okay, I will end the polling. Wonderful. So it looks like we have um, a lot of not sure yet. And I can understand that. And I'm glad you're all here. And we'll discuss more about what the different options look like. At Royal Roads, we have a lot of values that we like to bring. And it's a small detail, but you'll notice we go out of our way to learn first names first. To get to know you, this simple personal gesture conveys a deeper philosophical position for us. It reminds us that your path here is personal. It reminds us as well that it's solely your path and it is deserving of our attention in a way that is fitting to you as your name is. And that life is an education. Not all learning takes place in the classroom, even here, especially here. We value and respect students who arrive with a variety of different life experience and educational experiences and we think flexibly about admission and take into consideration professional qualifications that go beyond previous grades and degrees. Life is the biggest school of all and we will happily accept its credentials. And there really is no here and out there when it comes to education at Royal Roads, no division between theory and practice. You learn from scholar practitioners, study with seasoned professionals and put research to practical application. And education isn't putting your life and career on pause. It's bringing them to an entirely new place and a whole other level. And Royal Roads University, we are leaders in change and social innovation. And we have been recognized um, with the designation for Ashoka U Changemaker Campus. The Ashoka U Changemaker Campus Network is a dynamic global community of more than 40 university and colleges committing to advancing social innovation and change making across the institution and beyond. 
And some of the pictures here, um, top left is Hatley Castle. Um, we have a castle on our campus. <laughs> and then the beauty of Esquimalt Lagoon can be seen from campus. And that's the picture on the top right there. And Charlie's Trail, one of my favorite on-campus places for a lunchtime walk. It's beautiful. And you can find all of this on our campus. And here at Royal Roads University, we've been leaders in online learning for over 25 years. And now, I know I was a little bit too excited earlier, but now I'd like to invite Dr. Zenny Lee to come up and he will take us through this part of the presentation. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you very much, Imara, uh, for uh, uh, organizing this uh, webinar. I, uh, and uh, I also received uh, questions uh from some of you in advance when when you sign up for this webinar so uh i'm going to uh introduce the program and uh respond to some of your questions uh but feel free to put your questions if it's not answered then in, in the chat box and we will uh respond to those questions uh, uh near the end of the webinar and uh, I know that many of you are interested in, in this program. I just want to elaborate a little bit further about this program and then uh, uh, the uniqueness of this program and so, so that you can uh, make an informed decision uh, or you probably will attend another uh, webinar in our sister program, Professional Communication, if that's more interesting uh, to you. Um, so um, for those of you who are interested in the spring intake, uh, uh, that uh, we are going to uh, run this program uh, in the current uh, program schedule published online. And for those who are interested in September intake, you probably will see a revised program schedule uh, published very soon on our website. Um, uh, there are some changes. So I'm going to cover both of these. And for those who are interested in our graduate certificate in strategic global communication, uh, I'm also going to uh, uh, talk about that uh, after introducing uh, the whole program. So uh, we can go to the next slide. And um, First thing uh, is that uh, MA Intercultural and International Communication uh, as a degree program, uh, uh, you don't find that uh, often in Canada. Um, it's one of the uh, only kind uh, currently running in Canada. You have many graduate certificates, you have many uh, graduate courses, uh, but uh, you don't have a full program because uh, um, um, because we are running it and we are doing the best and uh, we attracted uh, students domestically from every province and territories uh, in Canada and uh, as well as uh, international students uh, from many, many countries. We also attracted Canadians living and working uh, in other countries to our programs, because uh, we, as uh, Imara mentioned, we have been running this uh, over a decade and we offer the courses either face-to-face -face or online. And uh, um, I like to highlight uh, the, uh, the courses on the slides because these are like what we call uh, as the backbone courses, uh, the core courses. Uh, in our program, and we organize the program courses as um, uh, in modules. So when you study the intercultural theory and the practice, we module that together uh, with uh, communication for development and social change course. So two of them, they are bundled together and then you take them together. And uh, the same as the other courses. Um, so all together, uh, you will take uh, 12 courses uh, as 36 uh, 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 credits, uh, and you will complete this program by either doing a research paper 
or uh, uh, intercultural communication learning project. So one is uh, more uh, to uh, more on research and another is more on practice. Uh, and that starts, uh, you know, we, we always try to balance uh, the theory and the practice because uh, for those who already learned a little bit about intercultural and international communication, you understand this is a typical applied social science uh, uh, discipline and it's always emphasizing and balancing both sides, the, 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 the theoretical part and the, the practical part. So for, uh, for those of you who have practical uh, experiences, work experiences, uh, um, you will find that you will, uh, uh, you will find that uh, the theory uh, components really helps you uh, to uh, to see what you have been doing uh, uh, theoretically they are significant and uh, for those who have been uh, uh, in university campus uh, always or very very often you know immerse yourself in the library you will find that we offer another half of the uh, courses very much emphasizing uh, practice field of study uh, and experiential learning and so, so, so it's a, it's a well-balanced um, um, composition. And uh, uh, another highlight I will emphasize is that uh, our program uh, is not only catching uh, the trend, but also leading the trend uh, in intercultural and international communication studies. So you will see many courses that we developed is, uh, very much uh, uh, pioneering, um, and uh, you know we have social marketing course for a long time before you know uh, social marketing becomes a, a, a catch uh, a word you know for employers, and then we have been uh, um, delivering courses uh, on sports for society, which we have a, 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 a big ambition to launch it as a standalone. Uh, major uh, in the future because um, you know we we find that this is this is something we really really like to uh, promote and also continue to make Royal Roads communication programs very much unique and uh, the last uh, course on the slide you see is communication for health and well being. Uh, you probably have already heard a lot about health communication and particularly in the uh, last year, the, the pandemic that we first suddenly find that, uh, you know, it's not only a pandemic, but it's an uh, infodemic and a uh, lot of uh, uh, misinformation for us to field and a lot of communication skills for health authorities. Um, however, uh, we add the well-being components because we don't only include physical uh, health uh, as our focus, but, uh, but also mental, relational, spiritual, and environmental. So uh, these are the courses I like to highlight, uh, but also feel free to ask about the other courses. You can find all the courses and their uh, uh, description uh, in our school website. So uh, let's continue. Uh, to uh, move to the next slide. And uh, it's, it's a graduate certificate in uh, strategic global communication. So um, we have the courses listed on the next slide as well. And I'm also the program head for that. Uh, I will explain to you why I'm the program head for both of these. So uh, Imara, we can go to the next slide. Um, the graduate certificate uh, program uh, is, uh, uh, is, you know, uh, basically uh, delivered in an online residency blended model uh, before the pandemic. And uh, after that, we moved everything online and uh, um, it will take you three months to complete uh, the three courses uh, listed on the slide. Uh, 
the introduction to academic integrity is a required uh, non credit course for all the graduate certificate. The, then you will take the same three first courses uh, as we offer in the MAIIC program. And after those three courses, and if you think you're too busy, too tired, uh, you know, too overwhelmed, and uh, or you know, for any other reasons that you would like to take a pause and say, okay, um, um, this is so far like so good, and uh, 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 but I will take a break before I continue with the degree program. That's fine. So after you complete the three first courses, uh, there's an option for you to um, uh, apply for the uh, graduate certificate uh, uh, diploma. And, uh, and then after a year or two, and you like to continue uh, with the full degree program, you can uh, uh, apply to the full degree program. And uh, because these three courses are embedded in our program, and so you don't have to take it again. And so, so it's completely transferable, the nine credits uh, to our degree program. So when, usually I tell uh, my prospect students that um, you basically take a quarter of the degree program first and then uh, uh, wait for a while and join our program uh, again. And that's uh, very common. Uh, you know, we can see uh, students take those passes and uh, that gives uh, students a lot of flexibility. So they, they, they don't have to uh, make a bigger commitment, uh, both on time and also financially. So, uh, so these are like the, the arrangement. And then um, uh, for the uh, September intake, uh, uh, we are going to uh, run a year long uh, uh, course, which is, which is new and which you don't see uh, on our school webpage yet. Uh, it's called Postgraduate Seminar in Intercultural uh, Settings. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's a brand new course. Um, uh, the purpose to run it uh, full year long uh, is that we, you know, before that we, we always run a course like in 11 weeks. And why we run a course in uh, uh, 50, uh, uh, 52 weeks is that um, uh, because of the impact of the pandemic um, that we find that uh, you know, it's really hard to arrange uh, 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 intensive you know, on-campus uh, 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 residency courses. But at the same time, because of the impact, you know, if we see a positive side of it, is that we actually can invite more guest speakers to our programs. And because um, many of us, uh, our uh, professors in, in, uh, in our department, we have uh, good connections uh, with scholars around the world. And uh, now it's just a Zoom away. And so, so we think, okay, why not we invite them to, to our virtual class? And, uh, and it, it worked well uh, last year. And so we convert a, a, a course uh, to a full uh, one year online course that students will attend 10 guest lectures completely online, write their reports and uh, um, uh, uh, connect with those guest speakers uh, in all the continents in this world. And this, we find that this really helps the students to expand their career uh, uh, network, as well as you know the perspectives. So, so um, we are going to continue that and expand that. Uh, so that's that's another thing uh, uh, you will see happening very soon. I think that's a, a, a very brief uh, introduction. And uh, some of the questions you asked, I actually can respond right now. Uh, 
For example, what's the difference between professional communication and intercultural and international communication? Because um, our school, we run both of these uh, degree programs at master's uh, uh, of arts level. And uh, I will uh, explain it in just a, one sentence. Uh, um, um, because uh, many of you already have a communication uh, degree uh, uh, undergraduate degree, so you know that uh, uh, you know things. Um, the latest, let's say, after the Second World War, um, communication becomes a, a a profession, and uh, you know people make life uh, on that, and that's uh, that's the uh, the formal starting of professional communication degree programs. So so basically, you know. Uh, Communication is uh, is the way uh, uh, you you earn your salary, and uh, for those of you who are interested in that, like say I like to be the gatekeeper, I like to be the message messenger, I like to make sure all the message is well received. That's professional communication. But at the same time after the Second World War, uh, we also see the dynamics uh, across cultures and nations. And so for those who likes to help uh, people from different cultures to understand each other, and you know, in this MAIIC is more suitable for you. And those people can be international business people, military diplomats, uh, in education, in health, in governmental relationships, you know, uh, settlers uh, and uh, refugees, immigrants, uh, any kinds of communities. Um, that uh, so so that's uh, uh, the way we briefly you know differentiate. Of course, we share uh, many courses and instructors uh, in our programs. So um, I think I responded to the master's laddering option already, um, and then career prospects uh, we have usually. Uh, in each of the class, we have usually one third uh, uh, of the students are from BC and, uh, and then the rest of Canada and the world. And then we also have about one third uh, uh, from communication uh, background, you know, journalists, uh, uh, communication officers, uh, 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 governmental relationship, uh, uh, and then we have about uh, a quarter, you know, related to international education, and uh, um, so previous. That's what I say. You know, it's previous work experience, and then after graduation, many of them uh, got promoted, continuing their current career, or switch to the new uh, uh, career in international education, international business, and. Uh, and then uh, intercultural, you know, governmental, non-governmental organizations. All right, Imara, um, I pass this back to you and uh, I will start to read the chat box. Thank you. Awesome, wonderful, thank you, Zenny. We're now going to jump into how to apply and I'm going to welcome Andrea on to speak more about this. Thank you, Mara. Thank you, Shenji, for all the information. And I also saw there were a few questions on the chat box um, regarding the program. So we will be covering or answering those questions once I walk you through the application process. Uh, next slide, please. Next one. <laughs> Thank you. So at Royal Roads, we have two application process or two ways to apply into the program. However, when you're applying, there is no box that you need to check if you're coming through standard or flexible admissions. Uh, the people that are going to be assessing your application, they will make a decision based on the information that you are providing. Uh, for standard admissions, we are looking for a completion of four years or comparable undergrad degree in a relevant field uh, with a minimum of a B in your GPA. And that program, uh, it has to be from a recognized post-secondary institution, either in Canada or around the world. Uh, we are also at least looking for at least two years of work experience or volunteer experience 
uh, preferable uh, with some experience at the leadership capacity. Um, this experience should uh, have immersed the application in any multicultural or intercultural settings or international um, background. Um, so you get the opportunity to, to explore more that how that intercultural communication will look like. For flexible admissions, uh, there's a few different options. Um, so I'm going to walk you through all of these. However, it's very possible that maybe you fit in one of these or in a combination of one or two of those. If you don't see yourself either in flexible or standard, but however, a combination of all of them, uh, please feel free to connect with our enrollment advisors so they will be able to provide more background and walk you and help you to navigate what uh, admissions or what kind of uh, information we'll be looking for your specific case. Um, so for flexible admissions, uh, the first scenario is when applicants, um, applicants must show evidence of having sufficient knowledge, skills, and abilities to complete a demanding academic course of study at a master level and having a significant professional communication experience. Applicants without, without an undergrad degree, but more than three years, the equivalent around 90 credits or relevant post-secondary education should have at least two years of relevant work experience, preferable uh, with a leadership capacity. Applicants within the two or three years that will be equivalent between 60 to 90 credits of relevant post-secondary education, uh, we're looking for at least five years of relevant work experience in an international or intercultural um, setting into also looking at that leadership capacity. An applicant with less than two years of relevant post-secondary education should have at least 10 years of high level professional communication experience in a leadership capacity. Uh, so as you see, there is many different scenarios of how that flexible admission we can look like. And we understand each of us have a different journey in our personal and professional life. Um, so now the how to apply or the application process is going to help you to provide all those details and information to us. Next slide, please. Um, so the key dates um, for this program. So if we're looking into the spring intake, uh, the application deadline will be February 8th and the program starts in March 8th. Uh, so if you're interested in the spring intake, I highly recommend to start your application as soon as possible and complete all the documents. So we will be able to provide and assess your application. Uh, for the graduate certificate, we will be looking exactly the same dates. Uh, intake starts on March 8th and the deadline will be February 8th. And for the autumn intake, uh, that is in the month of September, application deadline is June the 7th and the program will start in September the 6th. Uh, so now how to apply. So first you need to you need to complete an online application. The cost of these online applications is $126.28. After that, you will need to submit the following documents. Uh, the first ones are the official transcripts. To be official, they have to come uh, from in a sealed envelope, but I know a lot of organizations or universities are giving the um, option to students to email directly at Royal Road. So for example, if your university or college give you that option, I, will, I would recommend it. So it's one, the first box can be checked and we will get those documents. The next one is a detailed resume. And when we say detailed resume is we are not looking for those two pages of a resume uh, that we normally have to submit for a work uh, application. We want to see your journey. And sometimes it would take you more than two pages to tell us that journey. So we are looking for any post-secondary education that you have completed. Let's say if you did a few years in a college and then you transferred to a university, we want to see that information. We also want to see about your work experience. Um, and of course, we are looking for you to highlight that experience in an intercultural or in international settings. And of course, we want to see any volunteer activity that you are taking part. Sometimes, I don't know, coaching the soccer team on your community and you work with kids from different ages and different backgrounds. That shows some experience in a multicultural setting. So please feel free to share any information that you see a value for us to know you and understand your full picture of your experience. Um, of course, if you are part any associations or professional organizations, uh, we want to see that information as well. Um, 
A personal statement, I was an RIU student, a Royal Rhodes University student, and I always said to people that was one of my favorite documents uh, when I applied to Royal Rhodes, and it because it was a time for me to stop and ask me, why do I want to go to Royal Rhodes? Why this program was so re relevant in my career? And that is why we are looking in the personal statement. We want to know why this program is important for you, why do you want to apply to the program, how this program fits into your career and your professional development, uh, but also we want you to know, uh, we want you to share with us why, what are you going to bring into the program? What is your expertise? What is your experience? What you are going to be able to share and teach with others? Um, so that will be what we are going to be looking in that personal statement. And of course, if there is many, maybe a gap in your resume because you took a year to travel around the world, uh, hopefully that is something that we can do soon. Uh, or if you took a time to explore a different career path um, and you want to share additional information in your personal statement, uh, please do as well. Um, and the last piece is two letters of reference. Um, one of the advice I always give to people, if you feel comfortable, please share your personal statement with those that are writing those letters. So they have a better understanding of the why you are applying to the program. And they can highlight maybe a project that you work together. Uh, they can highlight about your skills and how this program can be so relevant for your professional um, and career uh, development. Uh, those letters can be a, a professional letter, so people that have been working with you. Um, if you still have some connections maybe with some of your faculty or your professors from university and college, that will be acceptable. Uh, but professional letters will be a preference for us. Uh, next slide. I also know I provide a ton of information about the application process. So all that information and more is available in the website. So I highly recommend uh, to check our website for um, more details or if you want to refresh any of the details I provide. Uh, financial aid is a question that we always ask uh, when people are looking into Royal Roads, um, how I can get that additional support to pursue my career. So we have a team of advisors that will be happy to connect with you and see which options are available for you. Sometimes depending on the province, um, the program that you're applying, your career, uh, there might be a different options available for you. So please reach out. Um, and from my experience, I would say always ask the question uh, myself. That was something that I was not very curious when I applied to university and I wish I have done the homework of reaching out and finding more details. Next slide, please. And you have had already the opportunity to, to meet two of our enrollment advisors through this webinar, uh, Christine and Kelsey. If you want to reach out to them or their team, um, you can reach out. Uh, if you are a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, our enrollment team learned that more at royalroads.ca. They will be able to answer all your questions. And if you are an international student, I highly recommend to reach out to uh, the International Enrollment Advisors team. I, they will be able to uh, provide more details about um, your application and any other information for you to be successful into the program. And then I believe we have one more slide and it's the questions slide. Um, so, Emara, if you want, I'm happy to pass over to you. And if you want to walk us through uh, the question piece. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much. I will stop sharing a screen now and I will invite participants to turn on their cameras and we can have um, some conversation and address some of the questions. Thank you, Imara. Uh, I already received a couple of questions uh, through the chat box and some of those were responded already. Uh, and so uh, you can continue to ask questions uh, in the chat box. And uh, um, I want to let those who's interested in the March intake, uh, then basically you can uh, expect that everything uh, from day one to the last day of your uh, study will happen online. So, so, so um, of course, you are welcome to visit our campus, but not 
study on campus. Uh, and so, so I'd like to uh, uh, make sure uh, uh, that uh, um, you anticipate that one. And then for those uh, interested in September intake, um, um, currently we are thinking to run the September courses, you know, the courses starting in September online. And, uh, and then we are considering, you know, to call you back uh, to campus uh, um, in the next year, uh, 2022. Uh, and we are watching uh, closely on, you know, the vaccination and international travel uh, regulation, as well as domestic. Um, because uh, you know uh, we don't want to put you in the in the risk, and uh, through last year we actually learned that uh, uh, you know many things can can be done online and also can be done better. Uh, so so uh, our students uh, were grouped together in the same time zone or in the same community, and then they have their own study hub. Uh, online and uh, we adjusted a little bit and we found it's 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 doable so uh, so for for any of you are considering uh, 2021 uh, intake um, you don't need to travel uh, in this year and uh, and uh, you can continuously uh, to check with our program office you can email to Tanya and ask you know when will be the earliest time for me, you know, if I have to come to study uh, in Victoria, because we don't want you to pay two rents or to, 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 you know, to leave your job or these things, leave your family, like it's kind of, there's a lot of anxiety and uh, we, we don't want that to disturb you. So that's on the program scheduling and also, uh, you know, don't worry about on-campus uh, accommodation. Um, in this year, and uh, and and uh, just uh, as I said, you know, all these logistics, you know, just uh, feel free to contact us, and uh, we will keep you updated. Uh, that's a big decision, you know, if you will come to study with us, uh, uh, face to face, and uh, that's that's first first question and then related to courses you asked if we have visual communication course uh, no we don't uh, in our maiic program uh, we have a, a higher uh, more advanced level course on enhancing uh, organizational communication diversity uh, which we uh, you will apply your visual communication skills the visual communication we run that in the undergraduate uh, program. And uh, since it's also offered online right now, so you're, you're, you know, you're welcome to uh, uh, attend some of their public lectures and also students' presentations. You know, they make three minutes short movies and, uh, and a lot of fun. And, uh, and we also uh, modified a little bit because uh, a, a big studio production is not possible, but then there's a lot uh, for you to work on. And, and in our social marketing course, we also have the visual components. So um, then you also asked about um, to what extent is a program geared to leadership and senior communication roles? Um, it, uh, it's a lot actually, uh, many of our graduates, uh, uh, and, you know, when, when they, when they uh, sign up for our uh, program, they are already in senior uh, leadership role. And uh, we have mayors, we have VPs uh, uh, and uh, 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 directors uh, when, you know, when, when they, when they joined our programs and uh, uh, we have an MAIIC Facebook group, uh, about uh, 300 members, uh, current and graduate uh, 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 from our program. And so you're welcome to join them when, when, when you join our program. And uh, it's also a very, uh, very powerful uh, social professional network. 
uh, it's basically like I, I I sometimes like boast to my friends that uh, you know any or any uh, city councils uh, you know government I go I can find an MAIIC graduate. Uh, so in, in Canada and then uh, around the world, we also have strong connections. So, um, um, and the whole program is uh, geared for uh, mid-career professionals. Um, you don't need to quit your full-time or part-time job. And uh, we also have students get married and, you know, get baby born and, you know, uh, get a lot of things done during the two years uh, studying with us and uh, but then when you ask about how much time we uh, need to spend uh, um, the official railroads uh, wording is uh, each credit requires to use 33 hours to study on that and uh, uh, I would say that in our program you probably need to double that because a lot of readings uh, and uh, a lot of writings, they, you know, we are not like chemistry and we, our lab is just, you know, uh, books and, uh, you know, online libraries. And so, so a lot and uh, uh, really depends uh, how comfortable uh, you are with, you know, reading and writing and online uh, discussion. So, so I would say prepare more time However, it doesn't mean, you know, as I said, you know, you, you have to quit from your job, you know, say goodbye to a family or these things. Uh, um, what I do personally, and also many of our students do is you try to find one to two hours per day, like quality time, like I'm an early bird. So I, uh, you know, I, I read and write when uh, everyone sleeps. So, so, so it's so good, right? And then I respond to emails and do my daily work, all these things. So uh, if you are night out, then find that time and then let your team members know that the most productive time of yours is reserved for your study. And that's good enough, that's good enough. So don't, don't over invest, but also don't underestimate uh, uh, how much uh, time you need. So, so um, um, I, I don't want uh, my students come to me say, hey, you know, it's published on Royal Road's website, it's 33 hours, but I actually need more. So I need to tell you now, uh, you actually need more. Um, 33 hours, I think it's for the president of Royal Road uh, University. Uh, um, and uh, then uh, you asked about the one year long courses, the one year long courses we are running only for the new scheduled program and uh, it's not yet officially announced. Uh, uh, so it's a preview for you and uh, uh, you, if we start to run that in September, then the first year you will have one year long uh, course and the second year you also will have the one year long course and so uh, uh, just follow up with us uh, for more details. The other courses are all 11 weeks and, and usually you would take one or two courses parallelly uh, you know, uh, in, uh, uh, in 11 weeks and then you switch to the next uh, 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 module. Uh, and between those courses, you sometimes have one week break and sometimes it's even shorter. So, so there's no real uh, holiday uh, and there's no real like uh, semester. So, so it's all year round and uh, taking the courses. So in my, in my mind, mentally, I don't really have, you know, spring or autumn semester or this. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of all year long running uh, uh, for teaching. And then you have already a master's degree and you have work experience and you want to pursue academics in the long run. Um, does it mean you want to be an academic researcher like a, a more scholarly work? And you want to understand in communication media uh, through the lens of gender sexuality in different cultures. Could it be a good course for me? Um, um, 
That's a good question. So that's also uh, why I suggest for some of you are not very much sure, or you already have a master's degree, or you know your boss doesn't need you to have another degree. Uh, take the graduate certificate first, because it's completely transferable. And so you take that three courses, and you find okay, well, I have had enough. Then you don't you don't have to you know to to do another master's degree program, and if you find that's that's an eye opening experience and that's more uh, directly related to a professional advancement, then continue with us because it's possible you know you just to continue with us. Uh, mm -hmm. So 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 um, so that's uh, my general uh, suggestion. But if you want to discuss further, uh, you always can email me and uh, and discuss uh, more on uh, on that. And uh, I will also use your question uh, to explain. Uh, you are exactly uh, uh, reading our minds that when we design the intercultural program, we are not limited to ethnic differences, you know, racial differences gender and sexuality and professional education, anything that differentiate us, uh, these are our research interests. Uh, you know, uh, these are our way to conceptualize uh, the intercultural uh, differences. So, so anything uh, that differentiate us, um, as well, like uh, for those people who can use Zoom or for those people never heard about Zoom, you know, there are intercultural communication difficulties for us to uh, uh, work on. And uh, can, uh, can you say more about intercultural field of study and other communication health components? I'm not seeing they reflect on schedule in the, in the March cohort, yes. First of all, the, commu the, the communication for health and well-being is a selective course and it's not offered uh, every year or every term. And so, uh, so, so it offers like every other year. And uh, uh, if you want to select that course, uh, then you don't select other courses, uh, you know, because we have three selective courses and you, you just don't select those and wait uh, uh, when when the communication for health and well-being is offered and take that course. So um, uh, it's very much common in other graduate programs. And then the inter intercultural field study, we suspended it because uh, you know we used to uh, take all the uh, of our students abroad, uh, you know, uh, um, and uh, we we like to do that because we use uh, foreign cultures, we call that foreign cultures, you know, exotic cultures as a mirror uh, for our students actually not to study on those cultures, but as a mirror to understand our own culture, where we are from. That's often we say, okay, we take you, take you from, from your water, from your ocean, and to another ocean, then you become no, oh, okay, actually I'm a fish depending on water and the, my preferred water. And so um, uh, because of the travel ban, like uh, it's logistically, it's not possible. However, uh, we find other ways to do that. And we designed a new course on uh, intercultural diaspora and uh, um, you don't need to travel, uh, but then you still can use the other cultures as the mirror for you to learn more about your own culture. And uh, uh, these are questions during the, uh, my little break I, I caught, and then I will uh, continue to see if, you know, uh, there are other questions. And then, uh, and also feel free to uh, continue to ask your questions. Um, okay. And very much, Thank you, you know, Tanya sharing the... Uh, can I ask a question link. or get clarification? Uh, Melissa, yes, I can hear sure. you. Please okay, go sorry, ahead. I don't mean to be so bullyish and jump in, but I had asked the question about the visual, visual communication and I wasn't at, like looking to um, produce visual communication myself. Um, okay. I'm more interested in 
the interpretation of um, visual communication, specifically art of indigenous and tribal communities to work with um, research trends more in like uh, clinical trials, that kind of stuff and those connections. Does That's, that make sense in this program? Yes, definitely. And also we have uh, 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 Professor uh, Gio uh, who can, you know, if you're interested, who can supervise your research paper on that because he's very, he's a master on researching, you know, using the uh, arts as a method. And uh, we also have uh, associate faculty members very strong at uh, visual. And so now I understand better, it's not about production, but about analysis and, uh, you know, studying it and using it for communication purposes. Definitely, yes. Uh, and those are, that's, those are what I mentioned, we give it uh, up to a more advanced level. And so, so it's not like uh, using Photoshop, but actually to see uh, if it's necessary to use a Photoshop. Uh, and then indigenous, we are going to run indigenous communication courses. Um, uh, we, have, we already set the, uh, the, the proposal of that course, and I hope we can get that approved. Um, even if, you know, not approved for the uh, uh, for for the program you signed up for, uh, that's the the way we uh, we run that one year long postgraduate seminar so that we can invite guest speakers, you know, researchers to present and uh, you know and to discuss and you study with that uh, uh, scholar for a month uh, on that specific topic and we are running ten topics a year with two months like as a break. And so, so it will be very rich over there. And as I said, our aim is always not only catch the trend, but actually step one, one step ahead of the trend, like before it's happening, like, you know, before the uh, election uh, in the US, we already had a, a, a webinar on that. And, and many, of our students find you know it's more informative than the, than the news <laughs> because because you know you, theories can 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 tell us you know can predict uh, what is going to happen and so thank you very much for uh, uh, asking this and uh, um, and also for the other audience you know don't hesitate uh, you know just just ask and. Uh, um, uh, I have the next question. Does the intercultural program still equip you to work in professional communication? I'm already working professional and I'm torn between the two programs. Yes. Uh, uh, it, of course, you know, the intercultural component uh, is more emphasized in MAIC and the, the professional communication, you know, MAPC, our uh, sister program, uh, uh, you know, also have intercultural courses, but it's not the only emphasis. It's more on strategic communication. It's more on uh, professional, uh, 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 you know, the ethics of professional communication. So those courses uh, you cannot find in the MAIC. So uh, for, uh, for the, um, you know, I think it's better, you know, you, you talk with both programs and, uh, and, and also, check with your uh, employer uh, or your clients to see which is the necessary suit of skills uh, for you to, to work further. And also see what, what's the future, like if you want to uh, change the, uh, the, uh, the track, uh, it's, the, it's the time. And, uh, uh, and feel free you know, to, to email me. I, I leave my email address uh, after I answer all these questions. And uh, another possibility is also to check with Andrea, like say we also have MA interdisciplinary studies where you can have some flexibility to assemble your own courses. Then you pick intercultural courses you, you like and then professional. And uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, but uh, if you like, uh, Andrea can help you on that as well. Um, let me, because um, uh, we have three more minutes to go. What was, uh, wondering, 
Okay, I think Melissa, we talked about that. Is there a list of alumni to connect with? We have, Tanya has the list and many of our uh, alumni volunteer to be the local ambassador and because they like us, you know, and this is one thing I'm very much proud of, like they won't hate us, like they won't say, well, I will try to forget about Yi, forget about Royal Roads. Um, I, uh, for example, last month, a, a, a prospect student asked me, you know, if I know someone in Ottawa, I gave her two names and immediately Daniela said, hey, I, I, I work for the Canadian government and I, I'm in Ottawa and, uh, and, 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 and uh, let's talk. And so they find that, you know, many, many common languages, more, more than I can have with her. And uh, so in, I, as I said, in every province, uh, every territory, we have uh, happy graduates uh, ready to talk with you. So you just email to Tanya and say, I'm from where? And I want to, uh, and uh, in BC, we have uh, covered every, every city, uh, I think. Uh, so, so uh, in some uh, places we 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 cannot cover so uh, widely, but uh, uh, just feel free to ask, and uh, we will connect you with a, a a graduate like closer to your uh, background or you know in your community and share the experience uh, with you. Um, and. Yes, so the September intake, it will be 18 months and uh, uh, we haven't finalized uh, the schedule because we finalized the 24 months version and uh, it would be a little bit uh, adjustment. Uh, uh, and then, yes, you have my email, you have Tanya's email. And is there a coming webinar for the P uh, MAPC? Uh, uh, then you will get that information for sure. No, uh, nonprofit. Yes, end of our, yes. Our uh, session today, but if you want to answer the question about not profit, not for profit, and then um, we'll have to wrap up our session today. But I you all so. know how to reach us. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Imara, and uh, feel free to contact us. And uh, really nice to see uh, many of you today. Thank you. Would you like to answer the question about the not-for-profit between the- uh, Many, many, and I can connect you, for example, with Jennifer Weisman, uh, who's, who's our star uh, in nonprofit. And so please uh, send an email to me. I connect to you with her, yes. And it's, uh, it's very common, uh, our graduates and our current students are working for a nonprofit. Yeah. Okay. Wow, thank you. And I'm so impressed with how you answered so many questions <laughs> in such a short amount of time and uh, went through them systematically. Thank you for that. And thank you everyone today for making the time to attend the session. We look forward to hearing from you and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. And I hope you all have a, rest, a wonderful rest of your afternoon.